Racing against the thigh during a static activity can assist in maintaining an upright trunk, especially for people with higher levels of injury, such as Spence using a cell phone. Leaning on the thighs provides the stability needed for Spence to pull his shirt over his head. Stephanie uses both legs to stabilize to take off her shoes. James uses a combination of leaning on his thigh and hooking underneath his other leg to stabilize himself to reach under his chair. Using the front hanger or leg rest is also a convenient place to stabilize while performing activities that require forward or lower reaches. People without the use of triceps will have to lock out their elbow in order to use this technique successfully to reach forward. A farther forward reach can be attained by stabilizing on the front hanger versus using the wheel in activities such as mopping or sweeping. Zeke is using this technique to reach up into the refrigerator to get what he needs. This technique can also be useful to reach for objects on the floor. Using the environment to stabilize is another option to prevent falls and increase access to the surroundings. This technique is especially useful when trying to reach for an object that is farther away than would be available by using a stabilization point on the wheelchair. In addition, if the wheelchair needs to be positioned in such a way that limits access to it, stabilization can be achieved by using another part of the environment, like a desk or countertop, to prevent loss of balance. You may need to reach for an object and not have time or not want to engage the wheel locks. Using the environment for a point of stabilization is more safe and less dynamic than relying on a part of the wheelchair that is not locked down. Stephanie uses a unique approach by stabilizing on the dustpan while sweeping the floor. This allows her to move her chair using her hands on the floor and continue sweeping instead of having to sit up and reposition the chair. Here, Spence stabilizes underneath the sink to provide him with the stability to press a toothpaste out under his toothbrush. Lynn uses a similar technique to reach forward in his shop and in his kitchen. It's using my surroundings so that I could reach further. I mean, if I'm physically not able to do it, I will use something around my surroundings to get that stability so that I can reach further. Frequently, people will use a combination of techniques while performing a single activity. In this instance, Spence is using his front hanger to lower himself down and then leans on his thighs to assist in returning to an upright position. Here, James hooks on his backrest and tire to open the drawer and then leans onto his thighs to reach the object in the drawer that he wants. Stephanie is using a combination of the backrest and wheel to put away the dishes. In order for Spence to get his backpack off of his chair, he leans on his lap for support and also uses his head to counterbalance himself to prevent falling forward while he is lifting the bag. Here, Mina is counterbalancing with her arm to get items out of the refrigerator. But when the object gets heavier and farther away, she grabs the tire for stability. Dressing is a good example to demonstrate how numerous techniques can be used to perform the same task. Spence uses his head, lap, and a controlled fall to put on his shirt. He needs complete trunk support in order to successfully pull down his shirt in the back. James downs his shirt using a similar technique with head extension to put the shirt over his head and then stabilizing on his lap to pull the shirt down. Zeke has a lower level of injury and requires stabilizing on his lap with one arm or the other to put on his shirt. James uses head extension to stabilize while trying to take his arm out of his shirt as he has to use the other arm to manipulate the clothing so it is not available to help stabilize. He again makes use of his lap while he finishes removing the shirt. Here, Spence demonstrates two different ways to remove his shirt. The first technique is similar to James by using a combination of his head and lap to stabilize 
to allow him to remove his shirt. Knowing more than one way to take off his shirt allows Spence to alter his technique depending on the type of shirt or how fatigued he is. This technique is different in that he leans his whole forearm on his lap to take his shirt off over his head. Zeke uses a similar technique but doesn't have to lean as far forward onto his lap. Being able to stable myself, stabilize myself in my chair uh, gave me the independence by doing all the little things that I do all day. Just as therapists try to put as many tools in their bag of treatment ideas to address a specific movement disorder, people with spinal cord injuries benefit from learning many ways to accomplish a task. Learning from my mistakes and figuring out there's one, more than one way of doing something has given me more um, tools to work with. Where an object is placed, how the wheelchair can be positioned, the size and weight of the object, the terrain the wheelchair is on, or even the time of day can determine the technique a person uses to reach an object or perform a task successfully. It's very important to know more than one strategy because there's all kinds of different situations that's going to be put in that that one strategy, if you only know one, may not work. Even though it might be the same task, the environment often changes and you might have to do open a door a different way or approach a door a different way, embrace yourself than the way you do this, your door at home that's the same door every time you go through it. And things don't always weigh the same, so you might have to brace differently to pick something else up. Many clients are very creative and develop new techniques as they go through their day-to-day -day experiences, such as Robert sitting on his tire to reach into the filing cabinet. So maybe when I'm out in public, I might, I might do things to try to look as normal as possible. And then when I'm at home and tired, you know, I'll lean on something or support myself or try to cheat, as I say, to, to, to accomplish the same thing. As therapists, we can learn from our clients' experiences and add their tools to our bags to give us more options when teaching skills to people with spinal cord injuries. I think knowing that you can do more than one thing um, or more than one way of doing something has given me a lot of confidence. In this video, we have covered balance techniques and compensatory strategies. Mastering these techniques and strategies can quickly improve the ability of a person with a spinal cord injury to function from his or her wheelchair, especially when newly injured. The ability to be able to resume performing routine tasks, such as getting milk out of the refrigerator or picking something off the floor, will assist in improving a person's comfort and confidence while functioning from the wheelchair. Improved confidence leads to a desire to try new activities. And ultimately, the confidence gained in successfully accomplishing these daily tasks, whether large or small, will lead to independence. I think confidence and independence in a chair are probably the same thing. Um, if you're not confident with your skills, you're not going to want to go out and be independent. You're not going to trust yourself alone. I think the thing that helps me become more independent in my surrounding is to have a certain amount of balance and stability because with that you could reach further, you can bend lower. For me being independent means <clears throat> not asking for help with things that I can do on my own. Um, for things that I do need help with, being independent means still being in control of those things that I need help with. I think when you feel more confident in your wheelchair being able to do your daily task, what it does is it overflows into other areas of your life.